Why is there a rental crisis? And when you see a shed described as a lovely annex and marketed for a thousand pounds a month, you know there's a rental crisis. I'm a property investor who's written best-selling books on the subject, but I also choose to rent my own home. So this is a topic that impacts me and which I've been studying very deeply. The answer is actually very simple and it's perfectly summarized by a piece of research that Zoopla has just put out. It gives the answer to why we're in the state we are now and what's likely to happen next. And I'll warn you now, most of it reads like good news for landlords, but if you stick around, there is some good news for tenants too. So the current rental situation comes down to three things, demand, supply, and the ability to pay. And these three numbers at the top of the report tell you everything you need to know. Rents are rising fast, there's 50% more demand than usual, and no more supply. You can see from this chart that demand started taking off in April 2021, as the world started opening back up after COVID. It's now down from its peak, but still very high. Where is this demand coming from? Kind of everywhere. More than half a million more people came to the UK than left it last year, which is more than double the level of 2019. That means more competition for each available property. Some of these are overseas students, where numbers have increased by 18% over the last two years. That puts particular rental demand on city centres. So there's more demand, which would be fine if there was also more supply but there isn't. In fact, there are basically the same number of rental properties as there were in 2016, when the population was roughly 2 million lower. This chart shows how supply has fallen across every segment, especially over the last two years, which makes sense because this is when we've seen rents really take off. But ultimately, people need to be able to pay. It doesn't matter how far out of whack supply and demand are, there comes a point where people just can't afford to pay more. Historically, rents tend to settle at a level where a single earner has paid an average of 30 to 35% of their income on rent. That's now slightly above 35%, so it's historically high, but suggests that on average, rents are just about affordable. But that is an average, and I appreciate it might not feel that way. In London, that percentage is nearly 50% because London is crazy. Importantly, within that average, the ability to pay is going to vary dramatically by a couple of different factors. One is whether you're moving or not. Contrary to what you might hear, landlords, on average, don't jack up rents as high as they possibly can for existing tenants. This chart shows that for new lets, UK rents have increased by 11% over the last year. But when you also include existing lets, so people who haven't moved, that falls to 4.4%. So someone who stays put will be doing relatively better than someone where circumstances meant they needed to move. The other big factor is where your income comes from. Wage growth in the private sector has been stronger than in the public sector, and housing benefit has been frozen. So that is going to make a huge difference to each person's ability to pay. Put it all together, and the huge increase in rents over the last year is basically for the same reason that hotel rooms get more expensive during the summer holidays. There's the same number of rooms, more people suddenly want those rooms, and enough people can afford to pay more for them, so prices rise. This, by the way, is why rent controls sound like an answer, but really aren't one. So if rents are held at a certain level, then that's great news for anyone who manages to get one of those homes, but it doesn't produce any more, and it actually discourages the production of more. So you're gonna end up with more people who don't have anywhere to live at all. So what will happen next? Well, I promised good news for renters, and here it finally is. Zoopla says that rental growth won't continue at the same pace it has been recently. They say that rental growth will fall to about 4 to 5%, and that's for the reasons we've covered. Basically, rents can't keep on running ahead of incomes forever. In London in particular, rents could actually fall. Zoopla point out that if demand falls from its peak, which it is, then rents will have to fall as well. And given that affordability is already so stretched, that 50% number we saw earlier, that looks pretty likely. And I'm actually seeing a lot of reductions on rental listings in the area of relatively central London, where I live. So whether rents going up is good news or bad news for you depends on your situation, but something that's affecting everyone at the moment is inflation. So watch this video next, where I explain why inflation is not going away and help you to understand what it means for your money in the future. And I'll warn you that politicians are not telling you the truth about it.